End Milling Fundamentals Part 1. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to choose your end mill. Now this lesson is not going to really be learned until you do a bunch of different projects. But as a basic rule, I will give you what you will need to know. We're going to be cutting this piece of steel and we're going to be cutting these two notches that I have scribed. So I'm going to put up a couple of end mills and we're going to choose which one we want to use. With end mills, there are basic rules that you need to choose from. First thing that you want to know is what kind of material that you're cutting. Next thing you need to know is what flute length is needed in order to make the cut that you're about to do. The next thing is does it need to be carbide, does it need to be high speed still? What number of flutes is needed? And also, which is very important, is what diameter is needed. Well, we are cutting steel, so high speed steel is out of the equation. It is recommended to use carbide on steel. So, we're going to go ahead and take the high speed steel out of the equation. This is also high speed steel, and it's also two flute, so I do not want to use that. High speed steel is great for aluminum and plastic. The next thing on the list is what size flute length is needed. We're only going down around 700 thou. So I do not need this long inch and a half to two inch cutter. This is a half inch end mill and it is very unwise to pick an end mill that with the flute length that's way longer than you need because you need to be rigid, you need to be strong in order to rough, in order to finish and have a good finish and it's bad on the cutter to only be cutting with the tips of the end mills. End mills are designed to where to cut on the actual flute length, not just the tips of the end mill. Next thing is, which it might be first on your list, is price. How expensive of an end mill do I choose in order to do this job? Well, we all know that half inch and, the, and up gets more expensive. So the smaller the end mill, the smaller the price. The bigger the end mill, the bigger the price. This is a three quarter inch end mill, which will get the job done. But A, the flue length is a lot longer than we need. But B, it's also very expensive. So we're gonna take this one out of the equation. Now we are left with a quarter inch end mill and a half inch end mill. Which ones, which ones do we pick? Well, we have a lot of meat to rough out, so there is no need to grab a small end mill. The bigger the end mill, the more rigidity you have. So now we are stuck with a half inch four flute carbide end mill. This is actually a reground end mill, so it's not exactly a half inch, but it is going to do the job just fine. Now we are going to load up the end mill and we are going to start roughing away the two notches. And then we will go over, if, if this had to be a perfect notch here and a perfect notch here, we're gonna go over how to go about measuring and finishing the two notches. In this example, we're going to be actually cutting a piece of material. We're going to be cutting this notch out. And then we're also going to be cutting this notch out. And we're going to be going over the basic rules of roughing. Now, when it comes to touching off your tool, you actually have your tool loaded now at this point, And you have your quill all the way up. If you actually stick your quill down, the less rigid that you're going to be. So you lose rigidity whenever you move the quill down. So you're up, everything is tight, your head's trammed in. and because we're cutting this notch out all the way through, we can turn our spindle on. Now you can touch off with a piece of paper, but because we're cutting material away, we can use our end mill, turn it on and touch on top of the part with the spindle on. So that is the very first thing we're going to do. I'm just going to slowly move down until I touch. Alright, and now that I've touched, I'm going to move down whatever measurement that I need to. So let's say we're just going to move down 700 thou. And that is our finished cut. So really I want to move down around 650 to leave myself some room so for finished passes. So we're going to move down one, two, three, four, 
five, six hundred, and we're gonna move down fifty. So we're gonna turn the spindle off and we're gonna go over one more rule. This is a very important rule when it comes to end milling. It is called climb cut and conventional cut and that is the direction that your tool is going to be moving into your part in order to cut the material. Your spindle is going to be moving, let me make sure that everybody can see this. So your spindle is going to be moving so that your cutter can take away material. So it's going to be moving in this direction. Now climb cutting is whenever your spindle is moving in the right direction and it starts climbing up the material like this. Conventional cutting is whenever your spindle is moving the exact same way and it's moving in the opposite direction of climb cut. So where we are at right now with our end mill is going to be spinning this way and we're going to be moving into the part in this direction. This is going to be known as conventional cutting because as it cuts into the material, it will not be climbing up, up the material. It will be moving the material out of the way. Whenever we're on the back side and we're moving forward, so if I was moving this direction, it will be spinning in the same direction as the material is, is moving towards it. So it's going to be climbing and pulling the material and the table towards the end mill. More uh, examples will be shown later. And it just takes a minute to get used to. This is, these are one of the harder things to explain to people. But once it clicks and it makes sense, then it will uh, change everything you're doing. Because if you're climb cutting on a manual machine, it makes things a lot harder. Sometimes you won't be, even be able to rough because your table is being pulled with your end mill. Because your end mill is going to be grabbing your material and pulling it, uh, pulling it towards itself. So anytime you're on a manual machine, you want to be sure to conventional cut, not climb cut. All right, so we're going to turn our spindle back on. And we are going to conventional cut and rough away as much material and as fast as we can so that we can move on to the next step. So first thing I want to do is just come over here and touch and zero it out. So I'm going to go on my DRO and set zero on my X and I'm just going to move out. And this is a 100 thou cut, 700 thou down. That sounded great. So now I'm just going to move about 150 or so. So we were at 100 thou. Now we are at 250. Same with anything else, you want to keep a constant flow. If you do not, then what's going to happen is it's just going to rub your material in it with your uh, tool and start to dull your tool. So now, we're getting closer, so I'm going to eyeball where that line is and stay off maybe 50 thou. So as you can tell, everything went great. That's how you conventional cut. Now. Again, if you were climb cutting, that would be a whole different story. It would sound like crap. It would start to pull the material towards the end mill and, the and it, it would start to dull your tool, start to chip your tool. So make sure you know the difference between conventional and climb before you start roughing. Now we are going to move over to the other side and mill out the other notch that we have to mill. Spindle speed. I am cutting coal roll still and I'm going 2200. I'm not using oil and I'm not using coolant. Now where we are at right now, the spindle will be rotating this way and we're going to be moving the material towards it. So it will now be conventional cutting.
Now we are on to the how do I finish portion of the tutorial. We are now at the point where each face has roughly 50 thou on it. The next step that I want to take is to finish one notch at a time. Because we're using a half inch end mill, it looks like it's going to be able to cover the bottom and the side of the part. And that's what an end mill is for. It's so that you can be perpendicular on the side and on the bottom of the cutter because the cutter is not only cutting on the side, it's also cutting on the depth as well. So we're going to take nice light skim passes on this side. Then we are going to check with depth mics from here to here and from the top to bottom. And by using depth mics, we are ensuring that the distance from the side of the part to this edge is right. And then the, from the top down is right. And then you just take light skim passes until you get the dimensions you want. Then, let's say we went ahead and did that, then you're going to move over here and you're going to do the same thing. So we're just going to take your passes. Now because we, this, this left side will be finished, now because this left side is finished, this right side can now be using the left side as a measurement, meaning that you can now just take a pair of mics and check over this distance until this is right. Because the, you depth mic from here to here that depth is right, then when you mic across this dimension, this depth on this right side will be right. Of course, it depends on where the dimension is being called off of the print, because if it, everything is called off of this edge, then you need to check from here to here, and then mic across this distance, and as long as everything matches up, then you should be fine. If it doesn't matter, if it's about five thou or so, you can use calibers and caliber across that dimension. But the first thing you want to do is ensure that this distance is right. Once that is right, you'll be able to check across this distance and also use depth mics to check this distance. Uh, that is how you go about finishing those dimensions. We don't have to really waste the time and show you guys that really. You're smart enough for me to just tell you guys how to go about checking things. And uh, if you do not know how to read a pair of depth mics, then go ahead and check out our video on how to read depth mics. Other than that, that is how you rough on a manual mill. Same concept when it comes to radius cutters or any other cutters. Make sure that you're conventional cutting, not climb cutting on a manual machine. On a CNC machine, climb cutting is actually preferred because CNCs are more rigid. They can, they can take care of the climb cutting. But when it comes to manual machines, it's not as rigid. So conventional cutting is the way to go.